welcome to the Global Dialogue as part of Investonomics and ICICA Direct. On the show today, we have with us veteran investor Mark Mobius of Mobius Capital Partners. Mark, thanks a ton for joining in. Mark, uh, to begin with, how do you view equity markets here in India with cases ebbing finally now? Economists are betting big on a sharp recovery in the second half of this year. And I do know that India is one of your favorite markets in the emerging market pack. Well, if you look at the news about COVID in India, it looks terrible. Uh, a lot of uh, bad news coming out about it. But then if you look at the market, the market has not really been impacted very much. Yes, it's uh, moving sideways. It's not moving up as much as it was before, but basically there hasn't been that much impact. And I think the reason for that is that uh, the market and investors are looking forward. They realize that this COVID situation is not gonna last forever and there will be a recovery uh, and India will forge ahead. Marco, where do you think the play is then? You're right, I mean, we aren't really declining, but flows from international investors has definitely slowed down which we will talk about that in a minute, but where do you think the play really is? Is the action going to be focused on large cap stocks or would you bet big on the broader markets now? Well, our focus is on the mid cap, uh, but you'll see some of the large cap will also recover nicely. Already you're seeing some of the bigger companies moving up slightly or at least bottoming out, which is a good sign. Again, it shows that ultimately there's quite a lot of confidence, but we particularly like the mid cap stocks in India. Right, we'll talk about your favorite mid-cap stocks too, but just before we go into that, uh, another macro question. How are you viewing the earnings season so far? Uh, do you think the earnings could provide the support uh, to the stocks? Uh, of course, largely because liquidity currently is slowing down. Well, I think you're gonna see a situation where uh, at the end of this year, uh, some of these companies will be uh, reporting surprisingly good earnings. Because we must remember, from a percentage point of view, percentage change point of view, last year was disastrous. So if you have a minus one year, and then even if you have a slight plus this year, the difference will be looking very, very good. So I think uh, a lot of people will probably be surprised by some of the earnings numbers. Mark, so what are the big themes then you're betting on in India? Uh, first of all, software uh, and computer systems would be number one. Uh, number two, uh, technology in every direction, even the hardware. Uh, number three, uh, healthcare, anything related to healthcare, healthcare testing, that sort of thing. And then finally, infrastructure plays. In other words, companies that make equipment for the infrastructure. Right, so we'll take uh, each sector uh, one at a time and start with software, right? You mentioned a couple of those, uh, the spaces in the IT sector would be software, hardware, a lot of the support that probably goes in. And IT, I think, has uh, sort of benefited in a big way with the first COVID wave and now, of course, uh, continues to get support. In the IT pack, uh, what is your preferred place here? Any sort of recommendations, names that you can share with us? Would it be the leaders? from the large cap space. I know mid cap is your preferred space. Yeah. So any specific names there? I can't give you uh, recommendations, but I can tell you what we own, uh, but please don't take this as recommendation because we of course. be selling or buying at any point in time. But a company like Persistent Systems is probably one good example of a software company that's doing very well and we think will continue to do well. Right. Uh, you mentioned pharma as well. And that, of course, has been, uh, you know, carrying the weight of the markets uh, on its shoulders all through last year. Do you think that leadership will continue from the space? Because you did mention that pharma is still a good play. How would you break that up? Would that be, again, with the guys or the you know, companies that are in the vaccination place? Uh, would it really largely just continue to be COVID place? So when things start ebbing again, pharma might again take a back seat? Well, our emphasis is not on the pharma companies producing pharmaceuticals, but in the testing area. Uh, for example, we own Metropolis. And okay, they so testing. testing as well. That's the kind of thing that we like. And by the way, not only in India, but in other parts of the world, we have a, a company in Brazil that we own that's in the testing. 
Right. What about hospitals? What about that space? Even, uh, you know, areas which may or may not be listed, but remote monitoring uh, for asymptomatic patients, for instance, for COVID asymptomatic patients is picking up steam in countries like India. Uh, I know while there is a tech play there, I'm assuming apart from your testing companies, how about hospitals and, you know, support to pharmaceutical players? Uh, would that be a space you like to? Uh, well, hospitals are a very, very difficult uh, area because they're regulated, they have problems uh, in that direction, and they've been overwhelmed to some extent. So it's kind of confusing to accurately assess where these hospitals are going. So we've sort of kept away from that area. Mark, also, what's your view on consumer discretionary? Uh, valuations are looking attractive now, and real interest rates will remain in negative territory up until the end of this year, at least, right? Yeah, I think uh, consumer discretionary looks quite good in India. And as I said, you'll see a big recovery uh, by the end of this year that some of those areas uh, could look quite interesting. Um, however, we're not investing in that area in India yet. Are you waiting for a dip to pick up stocks in the consumer uh, discretionary space? Uh, we're looking for an area where um, the return on capital is higher than what we're seeing now. So any specific names that you've got your eyes on? Uh, not yet. Nothing yet. What about utilities then? Another sector that's fairly rate sensitive, uh, gets a lot of support this time around in back of lower valuations too. I think utilities could do very well if, and this is the big if, the government decides to uh, dispose of more of its holdings. If you look at the big uh, state-owned companies, you'll see that 50, 60, well, well over 50%, 60, 70, 80% is in the government hands. Uh, if the government decides to dispose of these holdings, maybe going down to 50% or maybe even lower, that would be very, very bullish uh, for these stocks. And some of them can be very profitable. So if you look at the big oil companies, if you look at the big utility companies, even the railways could be quite exciting, but uh, we would not be interested unless there was further privatization. I'm glad you bring that up because privatization once again is picking up a lot of steam back here. Uh, so PSU generally looks good to you then, right? Yeah, some of these companies could be very good. If you look at uh, what happened in China is the Chinese government disposed more and more of these companies, uh, they did quite well. So I think uh, there's a great, great opportunity. And you must remember the exciting thing about the PSU companies is that uh, the index uh, in India will then expand and become a much larger part of the emerging market indices globally. So this means that there'll be a lot of attention, more attention given to the Indian market. So uh, this privatization area is very exciting. If Again, any specific sort of themes over there, any stocks that you're eyeing where, of course, once the news flows in, those accounters you'd want to go out and acquire? Well, it could be any ONGC, it could be the railways, it could be uh, any of those, even Coal India, it could be exciting. So there's a lot of, even though people are concerned about the environment and so forth, uh, you'll notice that Coal India is moving ahead to try and reduce emissions and in, the, in their work. So I think uh, this could be very exciting. Mark, I want to talk to you about financials. And if you look at the action on the street in the last few days, there's some sort of a shift, a tactical shift of sorts that's moving towards financials. I know they've lost the charm, if I may use that word. Uh, but how do you feel about financials? I know it's not a space that you've been very comfortable with as well in the past, but has that view sort of evolved? Uh, and more importantly, we are in a negative rate cycle. You do feel like there has been an improvement in the loan books. Uh, how do you feel about financials at this point in time? And you can break well, I, that down between yeah. private sector, public sector, and NBFCs if you like. Well, if you look at the sector generally, you, you notice and you look at the stock prices, uh, the bad news has pretty much been discounted. So uh, there could be opportunities there. You can see some of these stock prices bottoming out, beginning to move up. Uh, it depends on the individual uh, company, the individual bank. Uh, and it deserves uh, to be watched. We're not so interested in them because the market cap is quite large. Uh, so we try to stay away from index stocks and other stocks that are in the index. Uh, 
but there are, could be great opportunities, great upside in some of these stocks. Which ones would those be then, Mark? Well, any of the banks, if you look at the big banks, it could be Bank of Baroda, it could be whatever. Any of these banks could uh, do well going forward if uh, they're able to disclose fully uh, their bad lo loan situation. Uh, you know, transparency is the key. It can be bad, but as long as it's disclosed and people know where we are, then hmm. you can see the stock price move. And that really has been the biggest problem for banks in India, right? So fair to assume that you'd be avoiding the HDFCs and Cortex of the world and looking more sort of uh, in the broader markets, like you said, so the banks of Bank of Baroda's, maybe the IFLs and the NBFC space could be good spots. Yes, definitely. Uh, you must remember, as we go further uh, into the year, uh, the bank, you must remember the bad loan situation is a changing environment. Uh, now it may look very bad, but as the economy recovers, as the COVID situation uh, declines in importance, then the bad loan book will begin to look better because more and more right. the, uh, the clients will be paying back. So uh, uh, I think by the end of the year, you can see some recovery there. So I guess banks will be back in the leadership position that they've uh, certainly lost in the last year or so. <laughs> also, uh, the prediction of the monsoon is expected to be pretty good. I mean, we're expecting a normal monsoon very shortly. How would you play the agriculture theme in India? Is this a space that you'd like, uh, you'd like to get invested in? I mean, also, if you look at the way softer commodities globally are doing, it would probably uh, help me understand how to play the, uh, play the agri space in India. Uh, yeah, the ag space, of course, is very, very important in India. You know that uh, it's a big part of the economy. Uh, and there is opportunity there in companies that make uh, fertilizers, seeds, uh, that sort of thing. There will be a great opportunity, in my view. And I think that's going to be a big growth sector. And by the way, some of that has already been anticipated. Uh, All right. So, you know, you've seen some of these stocks move already. Companies like UPL have done very well. And I think at the end of the day, there will be uh, great opportunities in that area because it, let's face it, going forward, it's going to continue to be a critical part of the Indian economy. Right. Anything in the fertilizer space? You did mention that's a space you like. So any specific names in the fertilizer pack or, or maybe even a tractor manufacturer that you would like to sort of buy or... Uh, or would be I would say uh, probably UPL would be a good bet. Uh, that would be one area. Uh, any company that has a diversified uh, portfolio of fertilizers, pesticides, that sort of thing. Right. Uh, Mark, also, how do you feel about the rupee? Is that a concern for you? I mean, we're at an eight month low and it's definitely hampering FI investments. And we've seen that uh, in, you know, uh, with those numbers over the last couple of months. Uh, the rupee, a worry for you? Uh, no, actually, the rupee has done fairly well. You notice it's moving more, more or less sideways. It hasn't really been uh, weakening the dollar very much. So I think at this stage of the game, a lot is about what's happening to the U.S. dollar. Now, mm. if, uh, if the Fed in the U.S. raises rates in the U.S. dollar, then you may see strengthening of the U.S. dollar and weakening of the other currencies, including the rupee. But again, that also depends on what's happening in India in terms of the environment, in terms of the, uh, the economic environment. And if you can see the growth numbers moving, then there's no reason why the rupee should get any weaker. So we're not that worried about uh, the rupee, frankly. So you are anticipating a rebound of sorts at the recovery on the economy does take place in the second half of the year, right? Exactly. Yeah. So I guess that could be a good reason for a lot of the FI, fresh FI money to start flowing back in because of the currency reversal that could be anticipated. Uh, you know, we've gone from Bitcoin to Dogecoin. <laughs> There's so much of talk about cryptocurrency. And it would, I know you, you've been talking about that too, but it would be rather unfair if I don't ask you, uh, do you think this excitement around cryptocurrency will continue or is it is it just a passing sort of uh, whims? a uh, whimsical sort of trade that's underway? Well, I think uh, if you look at the pricing of Bitcoin, you'll see that they've had a big decline. I mean, the, the peak uh, has really been uh, destroyed. I mean, you've seen a big, big decline. Uh, so the losses are building up for those people who are holding Bitcoins. And I mean, if you, I'm not necessarily that much of a chartist, but if you look at the chart, 
it looks terrible. Uh, it looks like it's going to continue going down. So something is happening in that space. And probably uh, Elon Musk's behavior uh, yeah. has something to do with it. You know, people are beginning to lose faith because Elon is saying, look, I'm not going to accept Bitcoins for my cars anymore. And because that was something that was exciting. So, I mean, if you look at that situation, uh, the problem is that uh, Elon can say anything he wants and not be taken to task by the SEC or by any regulatory agency because Bitcoins and cryptocurrencies generally are not regulated in any direction. It's only when you start converting uh, the cryptocurrencies into real money, that's when the regulators can step in. And of course they are in some cases, there are a number of cases now outstanding. So I don't think cryptocurrencies are a good place to park your money, frankly, even though a lot of people have supposedly made millions and billions in these cryptocurrencies. You're right. It's best avoided. You just don't know when the regulation could potentially change. And of course, uh, the Indian Central Bank is not very big on uh, cryptocurrency anyway. I, I want to get your thoughts on gold and silver because there's a sharp rebound there as well. Uh, but despite that, of course, uh, you know, silver is still down 50 percent. Uh, do you think uh, these commodities have more legs to run? And also, uh, uh, while we get into that question, uh, if you could quickly tell me a good sort of portfolio co uh, construct that you're looking at. So across equity, debt, gold, and how much of liquid money are you really sitting on right now, which is waiting to be invested in markets like India? Uh, well, uh, I can't speak for the, my fund. As you know, our funds have to be fully invested so that you can't take that as a measure of where you should be personally. But I believe, first of all, with gold, silver, platinum, palladium, I believe these precious metals will do very well, will continue and particularly gold. Gold will continue to do well over the long term. So I would recommend maybe five to 10% in physical gold, not gold mining stocks and so forth, physical gold. And then uh, maybe 20% in cash uh, for the average investor and the rest in equities, because at the end of the day, equities is what you should be holding. And not only uh, Indian equities, of course, but it, equities, all over the world. You've got to be uh, diversified. For example, in our fund, although India is the biggest weighting in our portfolio, the second is Taiwan. Then we've got uh, in, uh, uh, China. We've got South Korea. We've got Turkey even. We've got South Africa. We've got Brazil. So we're very well diversified. And that's very important, I think, for any investor. They've got to be diversified. Mark, uh, while we wrap up this conversation, one quick question in. Uh, talking about your India allocation, if you could just share with me your top three holdings in India, that would be interesting to know. Well, I mentioned uh, uh, Persistent Systems, APL, Apollo would be another one. Uh, Polycab is another. Metropolis, I mentioned. So these are the big ones that we have in India. Right, great talking to you, Mark. Uh, have a good day and we'll speak to you soon. Thank you very much. Okay.